I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie. Welcome to a quick bonus episode of The Cool Parts Show. That's right. We recently did an episode on these 3D printed swirlers. These are devices that mix and combust fuel inside a turbine. And the designs that we have here were all created by students at Penn State University. Um, in that original episode, we mostly talked about the design and the 3D printing. If you want to watch the whole thing, you can find the link to it in the description. Um, but there were some other steps, some other things that needed to happen to these swirlers to prepare them for their ultimate flame test. The flame test. So, so we met some other students who were involved in some of the prep necessary to evaluate these parts. Um, we wanted you to meet them, but also they, they illustrate a really important point about additive manufacturing, which is additive manufacturing is more than 3D printing. There's always more going on than that. Even, even in cases like this, where the work right now is, is proving out the design, advancing toward a more optimal design, even to test uh, an engineered design effectively, there, is, there are important steps that, that go beyond the 3D printing. So here's an example of that. Here's a picture of the additional work that might be involved. So first up, we'll hear from Willem Greneveld Meyer. Um, he is a first year graduate student in mechanical engineering, and he worked on machining the central bore in these swirlers, which was not an easy task because these are made out of ink and L. Uh, so the 3D printed parts that came to us were uh, they were printed in 718 Inconel. Uh, when we received them, they had no center bore, there was no through hole. We were tasked with modifying them in order to allow them to work in our testing rig and to fit thermocouples into the parts. The most important thermocouple is the one that sits right at the uh, top plane where the flame sits. Basically, the only way to get that into that position was to run it through the center of the swirler and the center body of the swirler. So to achieve that, we had to take this to the machine shop. I bored through this part, and I also added a thread on the top. Next up, Kyle McFerrin. He is a senior studying mechanical engineering at Penn State, and, and the work that he did had to do with placing thermocouples accurately to gather the data needed to evaluate the effectiveness of a swirler design. So at the beginning of summer, Dr. O'Connor came to me um, and she wanted to get the temperature at the tip of the center body, which can be seen here actually. Um, and this is where the flame sits uh, whenever actually testing the rig. So she wanted that temperature just to see how hot it gets up there and then also wanted a temperature within the inside of the swirler itself. And this is to account for flashback. Um, and this is whenever the flame comes back into the test rig. Uh, it's whenever the flame speeds faster than the airflow coming up. Um, obviously, this is undesirable, so uh, I was tasked with putting thermocouples inside of the swirler so that we can uh, read these temperatures. If there's a drastic change, then we know flashbacks occurred and we know to stop running the test and figure out where the problem is. Um, so my main work was I did a lot of putting swirler designs inside the airfoils here. Um, and inside are, there's a little pocket where I'll insert the thermocouple into. Um, and then it will wrap around these uh, diagonal rods and then the wires will come out through the bottom. There's little hoard, holes. Um, then it'll go out the bottom of the test rig uh, through the motor. Um, and then also there will be a thermocouple going through the middle of the center body. Um, it will be a quarter of an inch below the tip. So that's how we'll get the center body temperature. Um, and that's gonna be done with this thermocouple probe right here. So those were some of the hardware challenges associated with these, but there was also a software component as well. Um, Avi Vajala, who is a fourth year mechanical engineering student, worked on simulating the computational fluid dynamics so that when these do go into the flame test, they'll have something to compare it to, to understand the performance of how a typical swirler works. Dr. O'Connor asked me to join this REU program. And what she mainly wanted me to do is sort of run the whole CFD operation lead through like sort of the simulation of the whole model running it through uh gathering data working through it so that way i can send off the data to her and like verify uh that what's happening in the simulation is what's going to be happening when they're running sort of the experiments once they get all their additive manufacturing parts into the swirler and sort of run the machine so when i uh, got the whole problem uh they sent me the CAD model of like the whole like combustor uh, of the whole device and I kind of stripped down the parts so 
mainly uh, focused on like the swirler, the nozzle. Uh, the program that I used for that summer was uh, Star CCM Plus, which is pretty much a, a program that they use to analyze CFD and sort of run post-processing. For the episode about the 3D printing of these swirlers, find the link in the show description. For uh, links to all of our episodes, go to thecoolpartsshow.com. Thanks for watching.